I'm sorry, could you speak into my good ear? I thought I heard... This one is something I saw during uh, the Two Tall Tobies speed modeling competition. I thought, that's really useful. Why have I not thought of this yet? Many people probably have and are doing this already. But if you haven't, this is just, it's one of those things. It's like, right, you don't have to do it. It's completely optional. It's not going to... Uh, right, but you'll see what I mean. Right, let's hop on over. Where's my button? I mean, stream deck. There we go. Right. It's a, it's a function or a, a tip that's going to... Whilst you're in part modeling mode... Put the or put any property you want on screen whilst you're modeling. Uh, like, and, and more importantly, and I think more usefully, it's going to be the mass properties and the material to remind you as to whether you've assigned the material or not, and sort of a running ticker on on the material. So, let's hop on over to. Oh man, I'm still in 4K. <laughs> oh, <laughs> it seems doesn't matter. I'll, I'll I'll remember at some point. Okay. Right, let's model up something. I don't know what. It's just going to... I haven't got time. I'm not going to do anything super fancy because uh, I want to get this done as soon as possible for the people that are like, get on with it, man. Hurry up. Get to the point. Don't have all day. Well, you, you kind of do, man. You, you kind of do. Right, let's... Uh, so let's model that. Let's put a material on it. Let's make this... Which material I have? I'm on the Autodesk material. I'd be sweet. Let's put stainless steel 304 and then save. I uh, will drop this on, oh, I'm still on my personal computer project, right? Let's go into the desktop, call this uh, widget, because that's original. Uh, ignore the, if, uh, you'll know what that message is if you look at my last video. It's not in the active project, don't care. Right, okay, so the, the little tip is if you go to the <laughs> annotate tab and then go to the notes area, general note, right? This is going to apply a 3D annotation, a perpetual permanent 3D, well, I'll get into that to the modeling viewport, which is going to give you a running ticker of the mass properties or whatever. So I'm going to pick a standard. It don't really matter. Uh, I'm going to pick ISO because uh, it's international and uh, that's how we roll. Then I'm going to pull that up at the top left. doesn't matter which core. It's up to you. You can put it at the bottom right. It's up to you. All right. You can type any text you want in here, but we're going to go for linked properties. So what you do is you, you go to the standard I properties of the model and it looks at the model you're currently working in. And then on the right hand side here where it says property, you can drop that down and you can say, I want to show text on screen for the current part number, for example, and then click this little X and it'll add a parameter. Click return, put the cursor underneath that, and then you can then choose material. Click the little X and it'll put that property there as well. And you can see it's putting it as you're doing it. Widget stainless steel, because that's the material we done picked earlier on. And then you can uh, for mass, it's a different property. You've got to go to the physical properties of the model, and then you can go to mass. You can have volume if you want, or density area if, if those are important to you. And you can just build a stack. Build a stack of them. You can change the size of them. However, right, if you think well, that's way too big, it's taking up way too much real estate, you can drop this down. I haven't done this yet, so is, is this going to work? Don't know. Uh, inventor's text edit is dreadful. But, yeah, yeah, not too bad. W widget stain. I'm going to keep, I'm going to make it a little bit bigger because uh, YouTube and all that, so let's make this five. Oh, there we go. There we go. It never ceases. To, oh, come on. This, this text editor is. Autodesk, your text editor is freaking dreadful. It is absolutely abysmal. Five. Keep it together, Neil. Keep it together. Like if I, if I press enter now to confirm that, it's going to close the dialog box. If I click out of it, keep it together, Neil. Right. And it still says three point. Keep it together. Right. There we go. There's your, there's your ticker. Right. If you click save and you notice that it still says NA at the top for the mass, that's because for some reason, Autodesk have got an application option which doesn't update the mass properties, the weight, until uh, you, you go and do it yourself, until you click update. So if you go into inventors application options, which I just did without, right, so that's file, then options down here. In other versions of inventor, it's like tools and application options. There's various different ways of getting at it. But there's a, in the general tab, there's a ticky box called update physical properties on save. If you give that a tick and make sure it's set to parts and assemblies, it's not on by default because uh, it's some of these settings have got to be from, right, from a time gone by when this would have actually really affected workstation. This should not affect any workstation. Any workstation sold in the last two years should not lose performance 
by updating properties when you click save. If your if your workstation is grinding to a halt because it's having to update some properties when you click save, even on 1,000, 2,000 parts, get a new computer. This should not be a thing. And whilst I'm there, I'm going to update this too. Uh, for the un undo file size, what I like, I can, I can never remember what the maximum undo file size is. So I always go 9999, press it and it goes right. That's the maximum one there. 81, all right, yeah, of course it was 8191. So I can never remember what that was. And then, right, that's got nothing to do with this. I just, just whilst I'm there. Right, then click close. And then when you click save, it'll update the mass 10.87 kilograms. And then whilst you're modeling, that is just going to keep. Why did I click new? Uh, then that's just going to keep updating itself as you go. It's just a nice little ticker running along, letting you know that you've actually applied a material and it lets you know what the mass is as you go along. Click save and it updates that mass property uh, and then it lets you know what the material is. You see, the thing is though, that's just for this part. When you start a new model, it ain't going to be there. So what you really need to do is create this in your part template. You can also do it in your assembly template as well. So I'd highly recommend you do that. And what you can't do either is copy and paste it. There's no, there's no copy. It's, it's, it's not copy pastable. So you have to go, uh, you can't even go new. So you'd have to go open. Uh, what I'd first suggest you do, check where your templates are because your templates might not be in the same place as mine are. So I'm going to close this down. Uh, should I save this? No, there's no point in saving it. It's nothing special. So go into the settings. Uh, look at the project you're working in. And then go to the folder options uh, drop down here and then hover your cursor over templates and then look at that path. That's the current path that your templates are in. And if it's C users public documents, that's your computer. That's your templates on your computer, the default templates. If your templates are on a mapped drive, like a Z drive or a, a T drive or an S drive or whatever, then you're using network templates and don't, don't just go edit them if you're not responsible for either managing them or if other people use them, because there's usually a process behind managing templates if they're network based and more than one person uses them. But if they're just on your computer, you're yeah, fine. You're fine. Uh, you can take a backup of them if you want as well. So you can go to C, you can go to users, uh, public documents, Autodesk, Inventor 2023, templates, ENUS. You might have a different uh, localization but it should only have one there. And then it's standard.ipt is the one I was creating a new file from. Uh, that old message again, that old chestnut. Right, once you're in your part file template, then you can just do exactly what I just did before. Go to, oh my God, what did I do? Uh, annotate, there it is. Then general note, I'm going to change that to ISO. Okay, drop that up at the top left and then just repeat the same process. So it's the prime, uh, standard I properties of this part. I'm going to drop in the part number which you don't, it doesn't have to be part number, right? You can put in whatever you want in here. It's entirely up to you, but I'm going to go part number and then I'm going to go to material, drop that in. And then I'm going to go to physical properties of the model, mass, drop that in and then okay, save that and then close it down. So that's now saved for every part that you create from this point onwards. You can, like I say, also do it for the assembly template, which pretty useful when you're checking weights for assemblies. Uh, there would be no material for assembly because you don't assign a material to an assembly, but uh, you can like have physical properties of the model, uh, mass for an assembly, and then part number, description. Uh, there's probably a whole bunch of things that are quite useful for an assembly. Uh, but there you go, right? And then you click save on that, shut that down. And then now when you click new standard IPT, it's right there, ready to go. Uh, and then we'll create a new part. Why is there only two there? I'm hoping one's going to appear unless I've done it wrong. <laughs> uh, there we are. And then can I, can I pick, um, did, I, did I put a part number in? Or is it not going to give me a part number until I actually save it? Uh, widget 2.0. Ah, oh, there it is. All right, see, part number doesn't appear until you actually save it. Fine. That's okay. Useful, really useful, right? A couple of, well, one thing that I've noticed that's just, you don't have to really be careful with this. It's just one of those things, just worth noting, right? When you, whenever you create a drawing and you place a view, these notes don't appear, which is good. You wouldn't want them to. But if you double click, no, you don't double click view. If you select the view, right click it, and then go retrieve model annotations and just click OK, it will pull it through. It's because it, it's technically a model annotation. But if you untake this one here, which is the general notes, it'll take it off, which I don't think I actually confirmed. Come on, you'll get it together. Uh, right click, retrieve model annotations. That's it, apply. 
Why are you not coming off? I did this when I was practicing it. I don't know. I don't know what I tell you. It went off when I was practicing it. Design view front. Select view that. Don't show the... Don't know what I tell you, mate. Can I just delete it? Yes, I can. I can just delete it. Beats me. That's inventive for you at times. It's an unpredictable beast. Yeah, for sure. In this moment, it's uh, pretty predictable. Uh, like us. All right. There you are. And it's, that's 3D model annotations being used for a little part number ticket. I found that quite useful. I found it out when I was research. I was looking at the new model states in Inventor, which I haven't really looked at since they came in. So I was researching those. They're a bit of a nightmare. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah, I'm going to be looking to do an, a tutorial slash a video on model states to simplify command, that kind of thing. That's coming soon. I just need to figure out all the nuances to that because there's a few. But that's coming soon on the channel. But yeah, that thought that was that was just a nice little ticket I have as you as you as you're bouncing along doing your thing. All right, cool. That didn't need to be eleven minutes long. Welcome back, Tech Three D and your CAD tips. Stretching out things that didn't need to be as long as they were. Get to the point, mate. Get to the point. <laughs> get on with it. Why you waffle on for so long? <laughs> because that's what I do. All right, then. Cheers, man. Thanks for watching. Uh, channel met. Actually, there's no file for this, really. Well, no, I will. I'll put the template in my uh, data vault. So if you want to grab the template with the, the ticker already in there, I'll put it in the, in the, the data vault for channel members to download. Uh, so there's a join button underneath the video. If you want to grab that so you can see it already done, by all means. You can do that. Uh, join buttons under the under the under the video and on my channel front page to become a member. It supports the channel and it also helps out uh, by giving you the files. Uh, and of course, our uh, memberships have been running for about a week now. So I'd like to give a huge, massive, monumental shout out to those who've joined at C level, executive tier, Chris Robertson, Jeffrey Barrero, and Scott Sherrod. Thank you so much. Your support is insanely appreciated. Really is. Thank you very much. Uh, and thanks to everyone who's joined at both levels. Uh, the support has let me do these CAD tips on the daily, mate, and has kept them going, and it will keep them going for as long as you guys are giving me your support. So thank you so much for that. Great. Thanks very much for watching. My name's Neil Cross. This has been Tech3D. Have very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. And now that. Like